fast, sharp, cheap. Generally, when choosing a new lens, you have to make compromises and choose only two of these traits. The 56mm 1.4 seems to violate this theory, but when something seems too good to be true, it usually is, right? Stick around to find out. This lens is officially known as the Sigma 56mm f1.4 DC DN Contemporary Lens. Uh, this design is uh, a little bit older, it's new to the Fuji system, but it's been around for Sony, Canon, and some other mounts for a while now. Um, today we're going to be talking specifically about this lens's performance on the Fujifilm X-Series cameras. Um, but most of what we talk about should apply to other systems as well, since the optics and the general build of the lens remains the same. The only thing that really changes um, system to system is the mount itself. Uh, one note before we dive into the meat and potatoes of this review is that I am not a pixel peeper. So if you're looking for a technical review where we're going to shoot test charts and brick walls and, you know, break down all of the minutia of the optical characteristics of this lens, I'm not your guy. Uh, what I'm going to do here is go over uh, basically my real world experiences using this lens for uh, portraits, weddings, um, occasional street and landscape stuff, but for the most part this lens has been my portrait lens for the last year and a half. Alright, so starting off with the features and build quality, uh, this lens does have a mostly plastic construction, though it feels quite solid in my hand, uh, and my copy has held up extremely well over the 18 or so months that I've been using it. Um, it has a metal lens mount to connect to the camera, which should add to its longevity. Uh, and it also, in that lens mount, contains a rubber uh, weather sealing gasket to help keep water and dust out. Uh, this lens is advertised as being weather sealed, uh, but they don't release exact specs on how many seals there are or exactly how much it can take. So I would still use some caution, um, as you should with all of your gear. Uh, always assume that it's not weather sealed and try to protect it the best you can. But know that if this lens gets a little bit damp, you have it out in the rain, it should hold up to that. Um, I've had my copy out for a few portrait sessions, uh, as well as a little bit of street photography in the rain, and it's held up well to all that. I've yet to have any issues with, you know, any moisture apparently entering the lens or condensation, any of that kind of thing. The hood on this lens is made of plastic, uh, like the main body of the lens, though it does have a very solid feel to it, and I've never once been worried that it's going to fall off the lens. Uh, it clicks in place quite solidly, and I, I trust completely that it's not going anywhere, and in fact, it never has fallen off the lens. And there is no aperture ring on the outside of this lens, as you can see, it's a smooth body. Uh, in fact, the only external control this lens has whatsoever is the focus ring, uh, which is a large uh, rubber grip that's very comfortable to use. Uh, and, you know, it kind of is natural to place my fingers on it and manually focus when I have to. Um, some users are not going to like, though, that this does turn infinitely and doesn't have any hard stops at the end, nor are there any focus markings uh, on the barrel of the lens. But honestly, to me, this is a non-issue because in 2024, most people are going to be using a lens like this uh, pretty exclusively with autofocus. All you have to do to update the firmware on this lens is attach it to the camera, load the firmware into a memory card, and transfer that into the lens, just the same as you would with a native Fuji lens. And I really like this uh, compared to some of the other solutions like a USB cable or a lens dock because it keeps my workflow consistent between this lens and my native Fuji lenses. While we talk about image quality, I'm going to go ahead and overlay some of my favorite photos that I've taken with this lens uh, for you to check out. Uh, but this image quality overview is going to be pretty brief. Um, in my experience, this lens is extremely sharp, uh, even wide open. Uh, and it certainly does get better as you stop it down, as most lenses do. Um, for me, beyond f2 to 2.8, this lens starts to get extremely, extremely sharp. But truthfully, I find it to be sharp enough wide open that uh, if that's where I want to be shooting for a shallow depth field or in low light, then I'm completely comfortable delivering photos to my clients uh, from this lens wide open. And I really like the rendering this lens has, especially at 1.4. Um, it's got a really nice out of focus rendering of the bokeh uh, and I just really enjoy it. I also think this lens has slightly warmer tones than a lot of the native Fuji lenses, um, as which was the case with Sigma lenses when I shot on Nikon as well. They've always kind of had a warmer uh, feel in my experience, uh, but I don't think that's a bad thing. In fact, I kind of enjoy that look to my photos anyway. Um, but as far as any uh, potential flaws or problems, right, sure, you could dissect this lens and you know, find some chromatic aberration here or, 
you know, soft corners wide open. Uh, you know, I'm not that guy. I'm not going to dissect it like that. And I've never noticed any optical issues with this lens that turn me off from using it in really any conditions. Uh, and I've certainly never had any clients complain. Everyone's been very happy with the photos that come out of this lens, uh, including myself and other photographers who have, have seen my work. Uh, I told you I wasn't a pixel peeper and I really meant it, right? Um, that's really all the talk about image quality I've got for you. Um, to sum it up, the image quality coming out of this lens is pretty damn good. And that alone should not be a reason to spend more on a native Fuji lens, in my opinion, period. Uh, moving on to autofocus, my experience with this lens has been mostly on this Fuji X-T3. Uh, and also a little bit of it has been on my uh, newer Fuji X-H2, which I'm filming this video on. Um, on both cameras, I find that this lens focuses reliably uh, and predictably, especially on static subjects, right? Uh, even wide open, if I have a subject who's standing still or not moving much, you know, a standard portrait session or something to that effect. Um, when this camera, uh, either camera really tells me that the lens is locked on to the eye or the face using face and eye detect, it's pretty much always 100% hit rate and I trust it entirely. Maybe in the entire year and a half I've been, been using this lens, it's missed focus on a static subject wide open a half dozen times, but it's been very reliable. Um, and I always take several, you know, photos of each pose just to make sure I have a good in sharp copy anyway. Um, when you get into tracking moving subjects, I'm going to break this down into slow moving subjects and faster moving subjects. And when we talk about slower moving subjects, um, like a person walking toward the camera at a steady rate, you know, this is be a couple holding hands in a portrait session or something to that effect. Um, I find that about 80% of those shots uh, land in focus when shooting wide open. Uh, and obviously that improves as you stop down and the depth of field gets deeper so the camera has an easier time landing the focus. Um, I find that 80% is good enough for me. So again, even on slow moving subjects, I'm comfortable shooting wide open. Um, and if I really, really need critical focus, then I'll stop down a bit uh, as long as I'm able to and, and then it gets back near 100% hit rate. So I've had no issues with that. Um, when you talk about faster moving subjects on this, like say uh, my dog sprinting toward the camera or sports, which I don't really use this lens for, um, but that'd be another example of this. I do find that if you're trying to shoot scenarios like this wide open, the hit rate's going to take a, a big dive, right? Maybe 40, 50%, definitely less than half the time. If you have somebody sprinting directly toward the camera, trying to shoot wide open, uh, you're gonna hit focus. But that being said to me, that's a non-issue because you just shouldn't be trying to do that anyway, right? Um, lenses like this are not designed for high-speed sports photography, and they're especially not designed for that wide open. And so really every camera you put it on is going to struggle uh, to track focus, you know, wide open at f1.4 on a fast-moving subject. Uh, that's true on any system, any lens, just kind of the physics of it. You have a very narrow depth of field, and it's gonna be very hard to keep up with a fast-moving subject. That being said though, if I stop this down, lens down to you know, f2.8 or 3.2, maybe f4, depending on the conditions, um, I do find that I can get relatively sharp focus uh, photos of a subject running directly at the camera. All right, so now we're gonna take a moment to talk about the pros and cons of this lens. Um, so let's start with the pros. What do I like the most about this lens? Well, truthfully, pretty much everything. It's light, compact, uh, it focuses quickly and has excellent image quality. There's really not a lot to uh, dislike about this lens in my opinion. It has a f1.4 maximum aperture, so it's excellent at providing creamy out of focus backgrounds, uh, as well as you know gathering uh, a lot of light in a low light scenario like a wedding reception or something to that effect. Um, especially when you consider all of these things together with the $479 MSRP, of this lens, uh, I think it represents a pretty good deal. Um, currently it's selling for $399 on Amazon. And at that price, I think this lens is a really, really uh, solid deal. And I've occasionally seen this lens on sale for around $350, which I think is just an absolute bargain. If you see this lens go on sale for anything under $400, you should definitely buy one. Moving on to the cons, for me personally, this lens honestly has zero downsides. Um, you know, sure, you could, you know, give it a faster maximum aperture 
or you could give it image stabilization. You make it out of metal so it's more durable and more professional feeling. But all of those things would add significant cost and weight to the lens, and they really wouldn't do much to change its performance in my opinion. Maybe the optical image stabilization would be nice to have, but almost no fast primes have that, so that's kind of asking for something that's not realistic. And on modern cameras with IBIS, it's just not necessary anyway. There is, of course, the giant elephant in the room, um, and that's the distinct lack of an aperture ring on this lens. I think most Fuji shooters are going to complain about this, because in my experience, most Fuji shooters really value the tactile controls uh, that come with Fuji system. In including the aperture ring and being able to change an aperture just like you would on an old film SLR right on the lens barrel. I'm gonna be a little bit contrarian here and say that to me, this absolutely doesn't matter. Um, this is likely because I came from Nikon uh, before this and I've gotten extremely used to using the front dial here to control my aperture. Um, you know, I had 10 plus years shooting Nikon before I switched over to Fuji and so that just became my muscle memory. And I'm sure somebody's gonna comment about how I'm crazy for this. But even when I'm shooting with a native Fuji lens, if I have the option to lock it into the A mode and use the front dial to control my aperture, that's what I do. So I rarely use the aperture ring anyway. And I find that that makes it really seamless transition between this lens and a native Fuji lens because my workflow remains the same uh, regardless. Wrapping this up, uh, who is this lens for? I think if you are a, um, a hobbyist photographer who's looking for a uh, lens on a budget, you just don't want to spend a lot of money on your hobby and you want to get excellent photos as a result, uh, this lens would be great for you. But I think this is also a great lens for a working professional, right? I think third-party lenses are utilized a lot by working professionals because they understand the value in having great image quality while keeping your overhead costs down, right? If I can spend $500 less on a lens, that's 500 more that I can invest in the business elsewhere uh, or that I can put in my pocket as profits for the year. And, you know, I've been using this lens for just over a year since I started my portrait and wedding business and it's never let me down. My clients are happy with the images. I'm happy with the images. And so I would highly recommend this lens without hesitation. Um, if you're interested in purchasing this lens, there is an affiliate link in, my, in the description below uh, where you can go over to Amazon and purchase this. It will help support my channel without costing you any extra money. And so I'd really appreciate if you do that if you're going to purchase this lens anyway. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'm really working hard to grow a community here based around photography and my love for outdoor adventures. I'm gonna be taking you guys on some hikes and some photo walks eventually. Um, I'll have to do some landscape photography, uh, take you along to some weddings and some portrait shoots, uh, as well as you know studio-based videos like this about equipment and uh, eventually some tutorials, that kind of stuff. Um, every bit of support is appreciated. Even just liking, comment, subscribing makes a big difference. Uh, if you did like this video, you should go ahead and check out this other video here. Uh, where I tell you which camera represents the best value for a Fuji shooter in 2024. Thank you, and have a great day.